We've been in Parliament together mm -hmm. for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at even our worst mm -hmm. and our best times. Mm -hmm. Our worst time being the end days of the Kanu era. Mm -hmm. Our best days being the Kibaki days, especially mm -hmm. the initial days. Mm -hmm. And I can say without equivocation mm -hmm. that where we are is worse than the darkest days of Kanu. <laughs> Our guest today is uh, Honorable Mother Karua. Mother Karua, there's no Kenyan who doesn't know her. There's nobody in the continent of Africa who doesn't know her. She's a strong lady. She was referred to as the Iron Lady of Kenya. Uh, basically because of what Martha stands for. So welcome Martha. Why haven't Kenyans decided let's make Martha the president of Kenya? She'll get rid of this vice. Those are the issues. Just freely we just discuss. Nice seeing you uh, <laughs> Cyrus. It's yes. been a long time. Yes. Yes. Maybe you should tell me what you've been up to, and then we can go into this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I man. haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just running around uh, with the current situation, one needs to find bread and butter yeah, yeah, yeah. and put on the table. So I've just been running around I doing think it's some hard little time business. It's very hard, very for difficult everybody. time for everybody. Yeah, but I do think a time has come yes. for us to reflect as a nation mm -hmm. and ask ourselves what do we want mm -hmm. as Kenyans mm -hmm. and this is not f just for me and you no it's for every citizen mm -hmm. every right thinking citizen mm -hmm. to pause and reflect mm -hmm. and ask what is happening mm -hmm. where is the shoe hurting mm -hmm. what can be done about it mm -hmm. I think for me we've sunk to our lowest yes. we've never as a country been as mismanaged, as misgoverned, misruled as it is today. We have a regime that is self-centered, that doesn't care about the people. The burden of taxation, which is so heavy, yet the budget outlook statement it's clear that the budget is going to triple. The, the burden is going to triple, if not go beyond that. And the deterioration of services mm -hmm. and quality of leadership, as you put it, mm -hmm. it makes me look back at where we have been. Mm -hmm. We've been in parliament together mm -hmm. for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at even our worst and our best times. Mm -hmm. Our worst time being the end days of the Kanu era. Mm -hmm. Our best days being the Kibaki days, especially mm -hmm. the initial days. Mm -hmm. And I can say without equivocation mm -hmm. that where we are is worse than the darkest days of Kanu. We are not lacking serious leadership in Kenya. What is the problem? I think the problem goes back to us individually and collectively as the voters in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I think we've, we became so comfortable during the Kibaki era mm -hmm. and the dividends of the Kibaki era spilled over to the Uhuru era. Mm -hmm. The economy was still growing mm -hmm. and things were not as bad. Mm -hmm. And as voters, we have taken leadership for granted. Mm -hmm. You think anything goes. Because why would you elect leaders that have no history of performing mm -hmm. and the history they have is history. Mm -hmm. You would not even agree mm -hmm. to take in somebody as a farmhand. Because mm -hmm. I always used to ask that question during the campaigns. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for a milkman for, to milk your cows, mm -hmm. and you hear that a fellow coming to seek employment at your boma mm -hmm. 
when he was milking at your neighbors, mm. was caught, not with a whole bucket, just a small bottle that while milking for your neighbor, he reserved a small bottle which he put in his jacket for his child. Mm -hmm. Your neighbor got the rest of the milk and it was taken to the dairy. But he was caught with that one bottle and was sacked. You would not agree to hire that person. For sure. You would actually chase them from your home angrily, mm -hmm. asking them, do you think I'm a fool? I don't know what you did to my neighbor. Yes. He stole only a bottle and the rest of the milk gallons went to the mm -hmm. farmer. But for management of country's affair, mm. you are taking the thief, not who steals the bottle, mm. who steals the bucket, the milk in the bucket, mm -hmm. steals also the bucket, mm -hmm. leaves you the bottle, mm -hmm. and after a while, even takes the one in the bottle and tells you the cow kicked the milk. <laughs> you see, yes. we do not, the public, the bulk of the public in Kenya, do not connect with the fact that public resources are their resources, mm -hmm. such that I should be very upset as a taxpayer that my resources are being wasted, are being abused, are being stolen. Just the way I would get so mad if just my pen is taken away or my handbag or anything from your farm mm -hmm. or just something little by somebody working in your house. You would tell them you are untrustworthy, get out of my house. Because they didn't ask you, it's something you could have given them. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they have misappropriated the item, mm -hmm. you chase them out. So we need to ask ourselves, if you are crying today about services in the hospitals, mm -hmm. you are crying about um, you being unable to pay the fees, mm -hmm. which by the way are going to be raised by the taxes. Mm -hmm. If you are complaining of, of our taxation, mm -hmm. of general abuse of resources mm -hmm. and mismanagement of the country, mm -hmm. why then do you hire the worst? Why don't you hire the other candidates? Because you have many. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking of just one job at the top. Mm -hmm. I am talking from that MCA mm -hmm. to all the seats in the county, to the presidency. Mm -hmm. Why are we hiring the worst? If we really think the shoe is pinching, mm -hmm. the only way to rectify it is using our collective power at the ballot. But I would describe it as the power of one, because mm -hmm. you vote alone. Mm -hmm. So each person or a majority of Kenyans determining that we will leave our national values mm -hmm. and vote people of integrity, and that we will hold them to account. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the solution. But this is a debate. This is a question every Kenyan must answer. Answer yourself. And when you sit with others, let's discuss this. Is it the way we have structured our politics that uh, our people really don't get uh, to think about who we are voting for? I remember uh, at one time when uh, Matiba was uh, a candidate, mm -hmm. It did not matter uh, who stood on for the ceiling. Yeah. He was just voted in en masse. Yeah. And also, if you look at uh, what has been happening, there's a time we had this thing of 4 and one yeah. uh, Fought one tribes against, against one. one yeah. And then we also had this campaign against the rich and dynasties. Is That's it that 2022. 2022, the other day? Yeah. Is it that Kenya, you have to market some hatred for you to be voted for? The two campaigns that have marketed hate mm -hmm. are 2007 mm -hmm. and 2022. Mm -hmm. And 2022 mm -hmm. is the introduction by the KK group mm -hmm. of the class, mm -hmm. which has now turned out to be fake. They talked of dynasties, they are creating dynasties. Mm -hmm. They talked of hustlers, mm -hmm. they are flattening the hustlers. In Mount Kenya, the youth were called hustlers. Mm -hmm. Today they are being called mongiki. Mm -hmm. Even old women are being called mongiki. Mm -hmm. 
it looks like there is a hate being brewed against a community again. Mm -hmm. 207, it was 41 against one. Mm -hmm. 202, mm -hmm. when we removed the Kanu regime, mm -hmm. it was not about tribe. No. It was not about Moi's ethnic group. No. It is the entire nation, a majority, mm -hmm. who said we are tired of, of the regime. misrule by Kanu. Mm -hmm. I actually almost weep when I remember the opportunity we had to turn around Kenya completely. Mm. Had there not been misunderstanding mm. allowed to foment immediately, mm. Mm. we came to power in mm. two or three. Mm. You know, the disagreements on appointments, which then spilled over to the constitutional review, mm -hmm. which then, after the failed re referendum, Mm -hmm. fueled to a hate campaign. Yes. How can we reboot as a country? We have to think of two things. Mm -hmm. A campaign of integrity would not be a hate campaign against any community. No. No community comes to power. Even today it's not a community in power. No, it's an individual. It's an individual and it's cronies. Mm. Kibaki era, it was not a community in power. No. It was Kibaki and the cabinet he chose, mm. which served every Kenyan. Mm -hmm. Even when there was a coalition government mm -hmm. and issues of uh, corruption started coming back, mm -hmm. it was still not about a community, it was no. the country. Mm -hmm. And you can see even the corruption was shared by the entire coalition government. Mm -hmm. So the two campaigns that have been ethnicized and the worst regime that has ruled with an ethnic lens the KK regime, mm. where you can appoint over 50 heads of parastatos mm. from one ethnic mm -hmm. community, mm. where you can openly say that a government will belong to shareholders from two ethnic communities. You know, it's still a shareholders government, mm. by the way. Mm. But it doesn't mean those ethnic communities are the net beneficiaries. No, it is cronies from those two communities. Mm. The ordinary rural person in, or even urban person, urban Kalenjin is suffering mm. like any other Kenya. Mm. The succession right. burden is on them. Mm. If they are not getting, if they are not entrepreneurs who wouldn't care about how much is being taxed because they are getting undeserved monies, mm -hmm. they are suffering just like anybody. Mm -hmm. The average Kikuyu, in, spe in, sp in spite of uh, the declaration by a certain Gashagwa that uh, is a shareholder's government, I'm Kiku, you have not felt any of that. <laughs> the ordinary person has not felt any of that. Yes. So we need this ethnic conversation. Mm -hmm. Is it your man in power or woman, mm -hmm. or is it the policies? Mm -hmm. The policies of the Kebaki government, inviting mm -hmm. every child to school. Mm -hmm. It was every child in Kenya, not every child from a community. Mm -hmm. The growth of the economy, the magical growth mm -hmm. of the economy, affected every corner of Kenya. Mm. We saw a vibrant in co in economy, both rural and urban places. Mm. The general well-being of every Kenyan, mm. access to hospital, to education, infrastructure mm. began to thrive before our very eyes. Mm. So when shall we get it as Kenyans? It's not ethnicity. It is the individual seeking office from MCA to presidency and what they stand for and whether they are, have a history of performer, as performers. Mm -hmm. I was saying during the last campaign and I was looking at my principal mm -hmm. who was Rhodes minister during that Kibaki era and mm -hmm. later prime minister mm -hmm. and saying that uh, the roads we are enjoying today the designs were done that time. Mm. The opening up of the roads, the repair of infrastructure. Mm. So without equivocation, I can say he's a performer. Mm. Nobody is perfect, but we know he's a performer. Mm -hmm. I served in the Ministry of Water. Mm. I delivered. Mm -hmm. I served in Justice. I delivered. Mm. So can everybody put their credentials forward? Mm. Those who knew that their history is as dark as darkness itself, mm -hmm. were saying, Usitulete historia. Mm -hmm. Don't give us history because you have no record to show. Mm. Kibaki's regime performed very well, mm. and uh, Kenyans were very optimistic the first term. Yeah. The second term, 
um, it started going down. What are these uh, critical elements uh, in the first five years that made uh, Kibaki's regime, actually Kenyans were most op uh, optimistic people yeah. in, uh, uh, across the world, they were very, very op uh, optimistic. When Kibaki started, and uh, on a few, uh, with a few individuals I've discussed with, I've been uh, one of the biggest supporters mm. of uh, the Kibaki regime, mm. particularly the first five years, mm. uh, where at one time, as a member of parliament, mm. uh, uh, an accident occurred and we lost five students from Masinda mm. And I made a lot of noise. Mm. I said, you know, you are doing a 12 lane road to Thika. Did mm. you discover oil in Thika mm. when you cannot fill potholes? I was the only opposition member. Yeah. And Kibaki took the trouble yeah. and he looked for me. Yeah. And when I went to him and yeah. explained, I told him this is what happened. In fact, I was scared when I was looked for. <laughs> so I asked uh, Soita Shetanda the late yeah. to come along with me. Yeah. And when I went and I discussed the problem and I told him we can't lose the, mm. uh, in an African setting, yeah. your biggest investment is your children. Yeah. Because you look upon them to mm. be the ones to hold your hand tomorrow. Yeah. And he told me what is the problem. I explained. And there was a road to be done in Nyandarwa. Yeah. He ordered Mudaura on the spot. Yeah. He said, that road will not be done. Mm. That money should do the road from Kisumu to Kitale. Yeah. He didn't look at me as a member of his party or somebody. That's his first time. Yeah. And I found, and then I just fell in love with this old man. Mm. He was looking at Kenyans as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the second term, mm. if... Uh, tribal inclinations started coming in, it was not out of hand, the way we have seen in several regimes. Mm. Uh, it was still within uh, 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 manageable levels. When you were talking about Kibaki and how he listened to you as an opposition member, mm. yes, Kibaki was looking at the country, yes. not an ethnic no. group. But also, Kibaki had a memory. Mm. And I am a very sure serious one. he remembered you as a Kanu minister, mm. because how you have projected yourself mm. is as a Kenyan, mm. visiting leaders from all corners. Mm. And this is the same way Kirwa was, because mm. during that time of tension between opposition and Kanu, mm. after the 92 elections, mm. 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 Kirwa was one of the few, and yourself, who mm. could talk with the opposition mm. and I remember Kirwa coming to do a harambe for me mm. and it's putting him in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yes. And I remember that uh, every time mm. they would see us talking, you mm. two would be cautioned. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure Kebaki, one, he took it as his responsibility that yes. if people are dying because of bad roads, mm. it was his responsibility, his govern government's responsibility to redo the road. Mm. But I am sure that in the back of his mind, he also remembered you as a member who works for the country. Thank you. So that must have contributed to him looking for you because he took you seriously. Mm. I better listen to this young man. Mm. Must have been what was working in his mind. Yeah. Now, the elephant in the room, yeah. cost of living, mm. is just spiraled to a level where Kenyans don't really know what to do. Yeah. Uh, you are a mother, you are a grandmother. There is nothing that pains when uh, a family cannot afford to put a decent meal on the table just because everything has become impossible. And the little they earn has all been taken away in form of taxation. What can we do? Uh, because really, we can't wait for four years. What can we do today uh, uh, to, 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 to try and mitigate? The, the current situation, uh, situation uh, the current uh, the country is facing. You know, the KK regime mm -hmm. is tone deaf. Mm -hmm. Even if Kenyans complain, you remember that uh, the uh, financial year that is coming to an end, mm -hmm. Kenyans overwhelmingly rejected the finance bill. Mm -hmm. It was passed by force by fire. Mm -hmm. Now there is a budget outlook statement promising a budget that is going to push Kenyans even harder. Mm -hmm. 
I think Kenyans have to be able to use their residual power because sovereignty belongs to the people. Yes. And it begins with each one of us, leaders and citizens alike, mm. using their agency, their voices to say enough is enough. Mm. Already people are having hardships. They cannot feed their children. They can't. There's nothing as painful mm. as the cry of a hungry child mm. when you have nothing to give them. Mm. There's nothing as painful for a Kenyan, sleeping hungry without knowing what you will eat even tomorrow, mm -hmm. without knowing where your rent is coming from. Mm -hmm. Many people's houses are being closed. Yes. Children are out of school and you are being promised a worse time. Mm -hmm. At a time, State House is asking for a bigger budget than the whole country. 351 billion versus 341 for the counties. 47 counties is the whole of Kenya. And the 341 is for everything. 351 for State House is just for splashing. You see, if you have people in authority who do not appear to apply common sense, mm. even in the simple task of budgeting, mm. then Kenyans need to use their residual power. You have said you do not believe in the streets. I do. Mm. Without demonstrations, multi-party <laughs> politics would never have returned. Yes. Without <laughs> demonstrations, mm -hmm. we would not have started the constitutional review. True. Without demonstrations, mm. we would not be having the new constitution. A fact. Without demonstration, mm -hmm. even the fake NADCO yes. talks. Yes. Because those talks did not bring no. anything for Kenyans. Yes. They would not be they would not have been on the table. Mm. So Kenyans have to be able to push. And there's nothing wrong with being in the streets. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with the police killing you mm -hmm. for using your agency. Mm -hmm. Even if demonstrators became rioters, mm -hmm. no human being can withstand tear gas. That's true. You will not see a majority choke on it. You do not have to kill anybody. Mm -hmm. Tear gas would be enough. Yeah, that's true. But we know, I've been in those demonstrations, mm -hmm. and people are not rioters. Actually, they are like joyful carnivals mm -hmm. until police come, come to throw tear gas mm -hmm. and to beat up people. And that's when things go wrong and everything goes south. So I would say respect people's rights. This is to the regime. Mm -hmm. Respect people's rights. Let people come out and demonstrate. We are being told in this country that in Eldoret it's okay to demonstrate. In pockets of the country you can demonstrate, but not in Nairobi. We don't want guided demonstrations. We want to demonstrate anywhere, anyhow, and within the law. Do not tear gas people who are just using their voices. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans, we will have to spread this. Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself, what if? We all came out peacefully in the country. Of course, the fact that religion. Nairobi is coming out when nobody else is coming out, mm. they bring all the police to Nairobi. Mm. One day, even the police themselves will demonstrate because there's nothing on their pay slip. Civil servants, the police service, mm -hmm. nothing is being left on the pay slip. Mm. Mm. What will their children eat? Mm -hmm. What will the children of civil servants eat? How will they go what to will the children of thousands who are unemployed mm -hmm. and what will the thousands of unemployed youth eat? Mm -hmm. We are not using money to create jobs. Mm -hmm. We are using money for splashing, mm -hmm. globe trotting, mm -hmm. and enriching a few people, mm -hmm. employing so many people in government mm -hmm. that is not needed. So one day, I know, people will recover their agency mm -hmm. and they'll tell this regime enough is enough. And I would encourage Kenyans to use their agency. You have always been referred mm -hmm. to as the Iron Lady mm -hmm. because you come out forcefully mm -hmm. and you believe in the rule of law, that uh, nobody should bend the rule of law. Mm -hmm. What do we do with our younger generation so that they can come up strongly? Yeah. Uh, we are talking about taking action when necessary, yeah. disciplined action, yeah. not looting, not uh, breaking people's things. Uh, what really do we need to... Because it looks like uh, the youth are not taking their civil obligation 
seriously. There is a section mm. that takes their civil obligation very seriously. Mm. But there is another section uh, that we really need to work on yeah. for them to understand this is their country. Mm. When it pains, they pain more. They are the parents of tomorrow. They need to come out strongly and defend what belongs to them. Actually, I would uh, talk about discipline. Mm -hmm. Because discipline, when you follow the law, it's about discipline. And that's why there are consequences when you don't. Mm -hmm. We can't be telling our children to be disciplined mm -hmm. when we are completely indisciplined. Mm -hmm. I will again want to address the Kenyan voters, including myself. You get the government you deserve. Because if you put crooks in power, you'll get a crooked government. Well, if you put language. looters in power, yes. you get a looting government. Mm. So the kind of government we have, we deserve it for now because that's who you put in power. I may disagree and say a majority of Kenyans did not put this mm. regime in power. Mm. But even to be able to rig, people must have had, we, in Azimio say, the KK regime got about 5.9 million votes mm -hmm. against our eight. Mm -hmm. The fact that almost six million voted for them enabled them mm -hmm. to manipulate the elections. Mm -hmm. If the difference was like day and night, the way it was in 2002 when Kebake came in, mm -hmm. millions of his votes versus uh, who is one million. Mm. It becomes impossible. Yeah. When he has such a lead in uh, members of parliament, it becomes impossible to rig. Mm. So we bear responsibility mm. that so many right-thinking Kenyans mm. could vote in a regime that comes then and does everything wrong. Mm -hmm. And you vote a regime that by its character, by its history, is headed by people who are totally indisciplined, mm. then you can't expect discipline. Mm. You see? Mm. So we, as voters, must again question ourselves. Mm -hmm. What sort of people do we want mm. to guide and us? And at, at also at the end of the day, yeah. 8 million people did yeah. not vote. Yeah. Uh, it means we also, for some reason, did not inspire the 8 million. Mm. We need to have this conversation. Are you helping yourself when you abstain from voting? You also assisted mm -hmm. in the rigging. Mm -hmm. Because if you have voted one way or the other, there would have been a clear difference mm -hmm. between the teams. Mm -hmm. Next elections, dear voter, this is your life, my life. If you're unemployed, it's about your employment. If you have a sick person who has either died or is on the verge of death, and you have no money for medicines, you're trying Harambe's, it's not working, think about that person and about you and your other relatives in future. Mm. Vote for health. Vote for people who can give you health. Don't just look at the manifesto. Look at the history of delivery. Mm -hmm. We said we would give free education. We done it in the Kibaki regime. We knew it was possible. We talked of free health. We knew it was possible. Look at the history. Are these people who know what they are talking about? Mm. Not people who will promise you heaven. And when you give them the power, they start telling you now, I want you to give me everything you have. Even before you put food on your plate, I want your money so that I can be able to do the things I want to do as a leader. Not for you, the things I want as a leader. Who has asked for houses? Nobody. Why should people be taxed against their will to build houses? Mm -hmm. Even in old days, during the Kanu era, the Kenyatta one and the Moi era mm -hmm. in the beginning, mm -hmm. I was remembering this morning that there was a civil servant housing scheme. Yes. People were not deducted money, no. but funds were put together. A national housing corporation built houses and I remembered the ones in Kirilisho because they were really nice. I, were. I coveted them but I had just started working so I wasn't eligible. And that scheme went on and then corruption overpowered it as the years went by mm -hmm. and it stopped working. Mm -hmm. It was again revived during the Kibaki era and houses built in Kakamega if you can remember. Mm -hmm. Nice houses. Mm -hmm. 
So it is possible to do housing. The council was also doing houses, Nairobi City Council, as it was mm. then called, now mm. it's a county. Mm. The Madaraka houses, the warehouses, where people were buying, mm. even Umoja was mm. one such mm. scheme, mm. Buruburu. Karobang South. It is possible, others. Gay, all those mm. estates, mm. it's possible to provide housing without killing people with taxes. It is possible to develop without overtaxing. The rules of the game are simple. Stop waste of public funds. Stop non-essential spending. That's where the money is. Mm -hmm. Instead of increasing taxes, do it differently. So I'm telling Kenyans, elect people who can do it with a history of delivering. People whose credential commend themselves to you. Mm -hmm. We have a job to do as voters. Otherwise, we will perish. We are almost perishing. And use your agency. Mm -hmm. We must stop this regime from killing us. Mm -hmm. Five years, many will have died without medical services, out of hunger, and our children will be totally out of school. Mm -hmm. We can't off it going abroad for jobs. Create jobs in Kenya. <laughs> the jobs created during the Kibaki era were not all created by the government. It's by freeing the economy and Kenyans, private sector, from the SMEs to the big companies, created the jobs. Now jobs are being actually uh, taken away by this regime because mm. companies are closing. Mm. Manufacturers are moving away from Kenya. Because of high taxation. So you chase and remove jobs that are existing and you want to take us abroad to do many your jobs? Because Other I don't... than that... Uh, and who is going abroad without a passport? Yeah, and secondly, mm -hmm. Martha, the most, the mm -hmm. most important asset yeah. of a country is its people. Human resource. Human resource yeah. is the framework on which everything grows. Yeah. And uh, you are exporting your best. So how are you going to develop? Other than that, you just talked about this housing. Mm. You are a legal mind, one of the most senior lawyers this country has. The land is public. Mm -hmm. The money is public. Yeah. Who should these houses belong to? The Kenyan people. Now, why are they being sold? They Who is benefiting out of that sale? And the, the sale price is higher than the Chinese houses yes. in town. Yes. And you call them affordable housing? And who is benefiting? And the land is now being given to private developers. So you grab county land. Mm -hmm. Because land belongs to the county. Public mm -hmm. land in each county belongs to the county. Yes. The national government is grabbing county land, giving to select tenderpreneurs mm -hmm. who then build the houses and benefit from them. If it was to the county and they are not a profit making entity, they are just trying to be sustainable, to build more, then the be prices affordable. would be down. And then they'll be affordable houses. If the tendering was open and we knew that companies are competing with favorable pri prices, mm -hmm. we would know. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing being planned for the new, I don't know its name, mm -hmm. the successor <laughs> of NHIF. Yes. I am told that we should expect mm -hmm. nine companies, they are zoning Kenya into nine zones, nine companies that will manage that money and determine whose health is catered for. So you tell us about cartels and you come and bring us cartels in housing and cartels in health, cartels everywhere. I heard Kidiki talking of cartels in passport that he mm. will chase away the cartels. Mm. So you've been creating cartels and nurturing cartels, mm. a government of cartels for cartels, not government of the people by the people. Where is the law? You've been a proponent of rule of the law. Yeah. And I think you had a lot of influence on uh, Kibaki's respect for the law. Because when he came in, he came in on the old constitution. Mm. But still, he performed. Mm. Still, there was respect for the law. Still, everybody had a voice. Where is the rule of law today? The rule of law has gone to the dogs when courts are intimidated to the extent that they bow down to the wishes of the executive. Because that symbolic move of achieved justice, who is being bullied, the whole judiciary is being bullied and the chief justice capitulates and goes to dine with the executive. 
and it's not a public meeting, mm. and they come back mellowed and they are told we will give you money. The money you are getting is not private, it's public money, mm -hmm. and you don't need to go to state house to get it. Mm. It's a very bad signal. Mm. I want to single out the High Court and say we do get very good judgments from the High Court. Yes. Not to say that there are no judges who need watching in the High Court, but the High Court is generally good. Mm -hmm. The Court of Appeal is second to the High Court. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will say nothing of the Supreme Court. They gave us a word about hot air. <laughs> and I leave people to see whether it's uh, a court that uh, gives good rulings or the rulings, to use their language, are full of hot air. And the magistrates, the lower courts, I don't have much interaction, but I must say there are sections in the judiciary who have been very firm. Mm -hmm. But again, voter. If a person has not in the past obeyed the rule of law, mm -hmm. why would you expect that when you elect them, they'll obey the rule of law? Mm -hmm. If they've been a violator of the law, if they have shown disrespect to the public by not respecting their property, mm -hmm. why would you expect? The kind of impunity we are getting, we built up that impunity by electing people known not by the adherence to the rule of law, but to the impunity. Mm. So whether it's corruption, whether it's misrule, whether it's lack of respect for the rule of law, can we have this conversation as Kenyans and accept that the rain started beating us where we threw caution to the wind and gave votes, mm. supported, people known to do everything that works against our interests. Do you see a possibility of us sinking into total anarchy? Because if uh, the executive doesn't respect the rule of law, yeah. where are we really headed? We must not uh, allow our nation to sink to anarchy. The constitution gives us, as the people, sovereign power. Mm -hmm. We can collectively put a stop to what is happening. But you must raise your voice. Don't expect me to raise my voice and it will be enough. Raise your voice. I raise mine. Collectively, we raise our voices as Kenyans. That is what is needed. Other nations have gotten out of uh, the mess. We can also get out of the mess. Even the French had to have the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. A revolution need not always be bloody. If a majority of the people raise their voices, even the, during the Moi era, mm. it is through collectively raising our voices to the extent mm. where the regime had to act. Okay. Your agency is called for. You mm. must raise your voice if the shoe is hurting. Mm. Yeah. Where is our identity? Uh, uh, one of the things I admire about uh, yourself, mm. Lumumba talks about it quite greatly, mm. is identifying yourself as an African, even your dressing. <laughs> You've been also uh, going around Africa mm. uh, a number of times, mm. uh, participating in uh, ensuring there's democracy, monitoring, and all mm. those issues. Uh, the, the way, and you talked about it, you said uh, being an African, we cared about each other. We were honest, we were mm. transparent. Mm. We, we did all that is good. Mm. Why is Africa losing its identity? And Kenya seems to be leading uh, in that. We are epping the West quite a great deal. Uh, you looked at uh, people like uh, Mobutu Seseko mm. uh, with the trillions. Uh, he will go and have his wine in France <laughs> while his people are suffering at home. This African identity whereby we dress the way you dress, we act the way you act, we live culturally, uh, we had powerful values. Uh, what, what is really needed for an African to know that I'm an African? I think there is a move for people to embrace culture. Mm -hmm. And I have seen even in the younger generation as we grew up, we started admiring straightened hair. An mm. African hair is not straight. Mm. 
So for the longest I wore a palm. Mm -hmm. Then I realized my African attire is not matching with my head. Mm -hmm. And I decided to have my hair locked. Because an African's hair loves locks. True. <laughs> and it has thrived so that from far you identify me mm. by my whole being mm. as an African. Great. And I am seeing a lot of young people. Even our dressing is changing. Mm -hmm. Weddings this day, you mm. see people wearing African outfits. Mm -hmm. Or outfits with a part African mm. uh, mm. attire. Mm. Things are changing. The trend is changing and we have to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to leadership, mm. let's look at the continent. Mm. We must also encourage each other. Mm -hmm. What is happening is happening to most of the continent. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned I've been going around. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have formed a network mm -hmm. of African political leaders, mm -hmm. the alternative leadership, mm -hmm. to come together, mm -hmm. encourage one another, and monitor what is happening in our countries. Mm -hmm. We are enlarging, and you hear more and more of us. We need to support one another. Mm -hmm. We need to share mm -hmm. so that things that have happened in one place do not need necessarily to happen in the other. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to develop Africa. Mm -hmm. Not the so-called partners no. who end up being exploiters and manipulators. Mm -hmm. Africa has enough human resources mm -hmm. and other resources, natural resources, mm -hmm. to build the resources. itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it your need the Kwame Nkrumahs, mm. Patrice Rumumba. Mm -hmm. It will need the Thomas Sankara. Mm -hmm. It will need that spirit. Yes. And I am glad that I am seeing the reincarnation of Sankara mm -hmm. in parts of the Francophone mm -hmm. Africa. We need to stand up for this continent. Mm -hmm. We need leaders who are focused on developing their countries. And that's where Kagame stands out because you can see what he has done mm -hmm. for Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We need people who will grow uh, the continent, grow our values, grow our identity. It is so sad that here in Kenya, mm -hmm. when already the constitution mm -hmm. has recognized culture mm -hmm. and obligates government to help communities build up their culture, mm -hmm that members of the Kikuyu community are in court being tried of being members of Mongiki and other fictitious churches mm. merely because of holding rallies mm. or going to the Kikuyu shrine mm. in Moranga, Mukuro Wanyakadanga. Uh -huh. You know, instead of helping people to discover who they are, mm. because as the Swahili say, Mkosamira ni mtumwa. Mm. If you have no culture, you are slaves. Mm. You must know your history mm. and culture promotes mm. the well-being of the community. And we are not, culture is not static. It gets blended with modernity. Mm. So trying to push back when people are going back to their roots to find their identity mm. is not only against the constitution, but it amounts to being a puppet all foreign forces mm. to repress the way the colonialists repressed our culture mm. to replace. Mm. And I want to say one of the things that uh, we need to look at. Mm. We have a problem in Mount Kenya, which is in many other places, mm. of illicit alcohol. Mm -hmm. Why are we having illicit alcohol, which is destructive, mm. when every African community had their own home brew? Yes. You had your busa, mm -hmm. which is called marwa in uh, my place. Yes, you have your the moratina. moratina. Everybody else had their own drink. Why would we still criminalize the way the colonialists criminalized mm -hmm. our African drink? Why don't we license and make sure if it's for sale, it's produced in clean circumstances? Mm -hmm. The way Uganda uh, promoted the their waraji. Mm -hmm. Even in Tanzania, they have their own, uh, is it... They have, they Konyagi have, or they, something. Konyagi is still uh, uh, Uganda. Uganda, yeah. But their local brews in the two East African countries are encouraged. Actually, Be I think uh, the mm. Muratina, mm. somebody had gone to court. Mm. And I want to agree with you, mm. our law courts yeah. are serious. Yeah. Because it was removed from illicit mm -hmm. brews. Yeah. 
by a court in Kiambu. Yeah. And that judgment came out, I think, yesterday. Yeah. The yes. Muratina. The Muratina. Oh, then so I Murat say hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so Muratina is no longer illicit. Yeah. Uh, just to agree mm. with you that the courts are serious. Yeah. Then uh, the other thing that is uh, bothering. Yeah. Kenyans cry about corruption. The same Kenyans, when you tell them, I want Martha Karua, <laughs> who is a no-nonsense leader when it comes to corruption, mm -hmm. to be your president. They say, but you know, Martha can be very hard, you know. So <laughs> what are these Kenyans, what are they looking for? I will first say that I think <laughs> we received, as, as Mio, as the two candidates of the presidential and running mate candidate of Azimio, we received overwhelming support from Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So I do not think that views are static, mm -hmm. but I do agree, yes, there are some people who say, Nimukali, mm -hmm. that I'll be harsh. <laughs> I don't know what harshness they mean. It's yeah. the only harshness of a mother keeping discipline. Yeah. Harshness uh, that is driven by love, not by hate. Yeah, for sure. And the harshness is just not agreeing to bend Perfect. to things that are outside the law. The refusal to bend is good for you, it's good for me, it's good for the country. Mm. Because when you start bending, how far are you going to bend? Look at where the country is. Mm. Of bending. Where you withdraw corruption cases against some people and then you are jailing the chicken thief. Is that the kind of situation we want? No. Can we have that conversation of where we want to go as a country, as a country. and what type of leadership we need? We saw good yeah. leadership from uh, Salif yeah. as a woman president. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing a lot of changes in Tanzania yeah. uh, with our lady president. Mm. What is this that is holding Kenya? Uh, not that we are lacking competent leaders, you are here. Yeah. Uh, or maybe we have another two, three very competent women yeah. that uh, can rule. What is holding Kenyans? And uh, when you look at the Kenyan population, mm. a majority are women. Mm. Do they have a thing against themselves or what? I think it's the way we are socialized. Mm -hmm. Anybody who gets elected gets elected by both men and women. Mm -hmm. And we have seen an increase in the number of elected women. Mm. Although we've also seen some women get rigged in, mm, yeah. but a few, mm. a majority are elected. Mm. I think the country has moved. If we were to have free and fair elections, which Kenya has not had, mm. I think Kenyans will express themselves better. So the challenge is to all of us, those in leadership and the voters, we together as voters, what are we going to do? to ensure that there are free and fair elections starting from our polling stations mm. up to everywhere. Mm. What are we going to do together to ensure that we safeguard our vote and that we are direct our votes where they are wanted? Mm. We are in time. It's two, three years away from the elections. Yes. Let's have this conversation. Let's move Kenya forward. I cannot give up on my home. Kenya is my home. I have nowhere else to go. That's the spirit. I don't think you can give up on Kenya. I believe in Kenya in our ability to turn around. Let's wake up together and let's do this together and let's keep this conversation live. And I think it's very important and great that you invited me to this conversation today. Thank you. Let's keep this going. Right. We need to discuss this, mm -hmm. not just at the national level, mm -hmm. at the grassroots level the as grassroot well. Level. Yeah. To change this country, to me, yeah. it doesn't seem a very complicated issue. Mm. Kenya has a lot of natural resources. Mm. Kenya has one rare uh, contributor to growth, yeah. its people. Kenyan people work hard, mm. Kenyan people are educated, they understand what to do. Mm. In economics, you exploit your natural resources, which mm. they call in economics land, yeah. It includes minerals, yeah. uh, the fish in the sea, yeah. our forests, and everything. Mm -hmm. You exploit your resources, uh, you get the people, labor, mm -hmm. you get your natural resources, land, and you put in capital, and you produce. With the abundance of resources in Kenya, 
look at a very clear formula that was put forward, Vision 2030, mm. by the Kibaki regime, that looked at the entire framework that will change this country. What is this that, after very competent, able Kenyans came up with a framework on which this country can thrive? People come up with funny ideas instead of pursuing. Kibaki did not come up with the vision 2030 because he was going to be a president until 2030. It is Kenyans who are coming up with a framework mm -hmm. on which they can tailor their development. Why are people or the leadership we have had thereafter derailed themselves from a very clear path, mm -hmm. opening up the Northern Corridor, Lapset, uh, means creating a market of Ethiopia, which is over 100 million people, close to 200 million people. Uh, Kenya, throughout, has uh, thrived only on this one corridor, exploitation of our natural resources. What is so complicated, or do we elect leaders who come to government because they think they are taxes, and that as far as government is concerned, it is a business, it is not leadership? What, what is it? that we, you as a leader, what is it that is eating our people? The formula is there, everything is direct. Even a leader, even if you are greedy, honestly, why wouldn't you just pursue the right path to change your country? What is the problem? I think it's very deliberate. When a group comes to leadership, their sole objective being to loot as much as they can, mm -hmm. to enrich themselves mm -hmm. as much as they can. Mm -hmm. You can see the design. Mm -hmm. If it's the housing levy, mm -hmm. I call it a slash fund. Mm -hmm. If it is uh, what is being called a transformed NHIF with the nine companies, is creation of cartels. Mm -hmm. The most notable thing that is currently happening is the amassing of wealth in those of positions of leadership mm. led by the regime leader himself. Mm. All you hear is them buying hotels, buying land, buying what? Which business is this people are doing that is entitling them to that in an economy that is not thriving? Mm. It shows that what they are able to do is self-aggrandizement at mm. the expense of the people. Mm. And again I say, are we electing competent leaders? That is the question. What sort of leaders should we elect? This whole question mm -hmm. about propelling Kenya to a developed, prosperous nation where every citizen can access basic needs. Basic needs being food, housing, education, health. What are the essential things that a human need, being needs to survive? Mm. It all revolves around leadership, able leadership. What it means is that we are having incompetent leaders who are not able to meet even the most basic of people's needs. Mm. To be able to meet those needs, we have to follow rules of the game. Following the rule of law in simple terms is being disciplined, mm. acting as you are expected to act, mm. respecting the laws and respecting the people mm. you purport to serve. Mm. But when you don't do that, you do not respect the people and most probably you do not even respect yourself. To wrap up, yeah. this country is yearning for serious leadership. You are such a serious leader yourself. Mm. Tell us uh, the future. What are you looking at? I've always been available to serve. Yes. And as long as I have strength mm -hmm. and I'm breathing, mm -hmm. I will always be able, ready, able, and willing to serve my country. I have served while in office and while I'm out of office. Even now I serve. I'm not on anybody's salary or per diem, mm. but I serve. It's my nation. 
And that's why we are here discussing issues, yes. raising issues, mm. because we are serving. It's service to country. Mm. And service to country, honest service to country, service to God and to the people. Great. And we will continue serving. So watch this space. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. I want to wish you all the best. Uh, you are such an inspiration. Uh, surely, this country is in our hands. If we expect that somebody else is coming to sort it out, there isn't. We know what the disease is. We know the medicine. Why don't we take action? Let's forget competition among, among us, our, our generation for leadership. Sure. And let's all generations forget that competition. Mm -hmm. Let's find out a formula and let's work with focus to delivering this nation to prosperity and to a nation where everybody enjoys equal rights and basic needs. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so Asante much. Sana. And I wish you well. Thank you, my dear and sister. And thank you for this conversation. Thank you. Yes.